Welcome to the Start Something Show. Join world-renowned experts, change agents, and everyday folks who have done the amazing. All here to help you start something incredible. Now it's time to step out, live your perfect day, and create a legacy with your host, Tina Dietz. Howdy, Superstarters. It's Tina Dietz with another Backstage Pass for you, and I'm here with Lisa Marie Platsky. For those of you who haven't listened to her show, and really, why would you do that to yourself? Of course you want to listen to her episode. But if you haven't, she's the CEO of Upside Thinking, Inc., and she creates high-performing leaders, uh, coaches people from around the globe, and has a focus on connection, leadership, and positioning, all of which we are going to talk about today. Lisa has Lisa Marie has also um, written some really extraordinary books, um, really love her writing style, and uh, she has this fascinating story about uh, coming from a background of law enforcement and not behind the desk law enforcement. So bringing all of that to the table uh, to help us be better leaders. So uh, just as a side note, you can check her out at UpsideThinking.com and check her out right now. Lisa Marie, thanks for joining me back here on the Backstage Pass. Woohoo! Thanks so much for having me, Tina. Yay! Okay, cool. Yeah, so you have a, a focus on. We're gonna. We're just gonna dive. We're gonna just go, because uh, I'm all revved up because our episode was such high energy, and I was like ready to rock this out uh, today with you. <laughs> well, look, I'm ready. I for gotta this calm thing. down. Let's I need to, go. I need to take a few deep breaths. <laughs> 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 this is why I like having my own shows because I could just be myself and this is, you know, take it or leave it, right? It's the way we are. But that's one of the biggest keys to what we're going to talk about today anyway is to perfect. get to be yourself. So. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> well, yeah. So let's talk, talk about that. You've, you've got these three areas, connection, leadership, and positioning. And they are distinct and they all kind of fold together. I've heard you say that connection is the new currency. What does that mean? Ooh, what a great question. Connection, the new currency. I, you know, I, I believe that when you connect with people, there's this element of touch sometimes comes through spoken words. It comes actually sometimes comes from something physical, but you know, a connection is like this, this, you know, if you can envision, you know, like a lightning bolt, you know, there's this energy between two people. And when, when you choose, you know, sometimes people will use the word networking or I'm going to build a network. And that's something that you don't need another person's permission to add them to your network. You know, you can say, oh, this person's, you know, we're, 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 you know, we're in the same network together or, you know, this is somebody that I network with. But connection involves permission, right? You and I have to decide. You have to say, you know what? I want to be connected to you. I have to decide and say, I want to be connected to you. And, you know, in the two of us, you know, we create this synergy together. And that's what I really see as connection being. And so the reason why it's a form of currency is because in today's world, it's, it's really less about the knowledge that you possess and more about your circle, you know, your, your sphere of influence, if you will, which is, um, you know, all leadership is, which is, which is influence. And there's a wonderful African proverb that says, I am the connections that I weave. So I am, I, I, who I am in the world, it speaks volumes about who it is that I touch and I'm connected to. And connections are, you know, to me, what opens doors of opportunity and influence. And if you're not able to connect incredibly well, if you're not able to, you know, have people want to be connected to you, then you aren't going to be the person who's the leader or the person with the greatest amount of influence. So I believe it operates very much like money. Well, that makes complete sense then. So what do you think would be one of the most likely ways for somebody to screw that up? <laughs> oh, but there are so many. <laughs> well, we are human beings. Our creativity so, is endless. Yes. So, yes, exactly. You know, um, you know, one of the, one of the ways that I speak about often is that people will, you know, a bit, a blunder, I will say that, that people will make is that they don't operate like a journalist. And so journalists are masterful at asking questions, you know, the who, the what, the where, the when, the why of a situation. And when you're, 
in a connection, it's so important to get curious about the other person. But sometimes people lose their minds, right? They, they're, they're in a conversation and someone says, so, you know, tell, you know, tell me a little bit about that. And the next thing you know, 20 minutes later, you know, they're giving you everything and your brain fell asleep a long time ago. Yeah. But see, journalists don't do that because they operate in sound bites, right? So it's more about understanding that the connection is more like, you know, a courtship. It's not a one night stand. You don't have to get it all done <laughs> the first time you meet someone. Right, exactly. So, so, so that, that I would say is a huge blunder that people make and sometimes consciously and sometimes, you know, um, you know, completely unaware. Exactly. And our, uh, our mutual colleague, Sean Duperin would call that the cycle of reciprocity that give and take between between two people. That is so beautiful. And some of the research that's been done on listening shows that most human beings are only good for about 17 seconds before we have an urge to interrupt. Yes, yes. <laughs> so if you're thinking about talking to people, it's probably a good idea to think about talking for about 15 to 20 seconds and then asking a question back. So oh, heavens, I think I might have violated that in our earlier interview. <laughs> oh, no, not at all. See, it's different. We have full permission here. Oh, good. It's all full. Everyone is welcome, just as you are. We're all perfectly imperfect here. It's beautiful. No, but it's true. It's, <clears throat> yeah. it's true. It's almost like you should wear that. You should have this little stopwatch that, you know, beep, you know, your time. Like playing up. chess, right? <laughs> Here's my move. Click your turn. Yeah. <laughs> so then moving into the leadership sphere, what do powerful leaders do that, that every average everyday Joes don't? It goes back to, you know, that, that element that we just spoke about. Great leaders ask great questions. So they don't just ask any question. They ask great questions. And that, you know, ties into emotional intelligence. It ties into so many elements of being able to be a standout leader. When I first start, started, you know, the business and I said, oh, okay, you know, it's, I'm going to, I, I want to transform lives through leadership development. And I really believe that leadership is the key because leadership is influence. I mean, Tina, that sounds great in theory, but what the heck does that mean to people is really what I was up against. And so, and getting a small business owner to consume that or to really say, oh yeah, I, well, the, well, the thing that I need to invest in is leadership. I mean, it, it didn't compute. No, because they so, think they need to buy ads. Right. Ex yes. ex exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so I had to really say, okay, so then what is it? So then what is it, you know, and continue to go down that, you know, digging deeper and leadership is influence. And so if you have no followers, you're not the leader. And if you have no clients, you're not going to be in business very long because that's what the influence is, is getting people to, to, to want to either, you know, partner with you or, or buy from you. And so, um, I, I found that, you know, great leaders are people who just ask great questions so that people want to be closer to them and they see them as somebody who is an influencer because of the questions they ask, not necessarily because of the answers, because people... People really want to, we all, you know, mean me, me especially, you know, and, um, I have found most people want to be valued, appreciated, and loved. And that's really it. And so when you're someone who's asking questions, you're saying you matter, you matter, you matter, you matter. And when those questions are even more tied to being interested about me sincerely, you become someone who is influential. Now, I have, I have an example for you, and I want to know if you're going to agree with me on this one or not. You, you had mentioned in your um, episode of the Start Something show that um, one of your your first uh, contract as an entrepreneur after you had left your career in law enforcement, that um, in a nutshell, that you had received because somebody – uh, who was influential and was interested in what you had to say, overheard you having a conversation with somebody else where you were adding value to that person. You were doing a lot of leadership uh, conferences and lead leadership workshops and things like that. And this person overheard you and was so drawn to what you were saying. They were like, yeah, she knows what she's talking about. That led to further conversations and ultimately led to this very nice contract. Now, 
As someone who uh, is, let's say, a small business owner, entrepreneur, consultant, coach, whatever the case may be, out networking, out having conversations with people, I think a mistake that people make is telling people too much about their expertise rather than showing and demonstrating their expertise through asking good questions. Would you agree that that's the case? Oh, absolutely. 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 Because then you're stuck in the convincing game. You know, let me convince you how great I am. And, and that's the reason why I got interested in positioning because you're not convincing, you know, you're, you know, you're, you're in this space where the other person is important. And I think that, um, I think that sometimes gets lost. So absolutely. That's a great, that's a, a great, um, example of sometimes where things blow up and they go wrong. Exactly. And, you know, and it's so much easier to ask questions of somebody and trying to draw them out rather than platform, right? Yes. And, and when you go out and you're networking, you're not selling. No. You know, you're, you're, you know, you're in, you know, if, if anything, you're marketing and that means, you know, you're doing your research by finding out that means asking questions. Do you have any favorite questions that you like to ask uh, people you prospectively might want to work with? I do. You know, I, you know, I, I have, you know, genuine interest in how people got started in their industry. Yeah. And so I like to ask about that, you know, how someone got started. It's interesting, you know, the, the stories that people are willing to share and disclose. Um, and I like to ask about growth, like, you know, whether or not they, they, uh, right now we're in a period of growth or whether they're in the period of slowing down. And of course I ask that as an, um, you know, an open-ended question, not like, are you in a, you know, a, you know, a yes or a no. Um, and, and the reason for that is because it's interesting to see where people, uh, it's a, not a question that's typically asked. And so for some people it, it, it almost, um, um, causes them to pause for a moment and really think about where it is they are. And, uh, um, and I also like to ask questions about, you know, uh, you know, what they're, what do they foresee happening for their business or for themselves over the course of the next six months? So it, for me, it's really getting a feel for, for who this person is. You know, you certainly, um, I'm, I'm amazed at the things that people will disclose and share sometimes incredibly personal and what's going on in their lives that it's, um, it's sometimes very humbling, you know, to, to be holding space for another human being when they sometimes get vulnerable or yeah. share things that, you know, that here you are and, and you're, they don't really know you and yet they feel comfortable enough to, to give you information about themselves it's such a privilege to be able mm -hmm. to hold that space. Yeah. I, I totally agree. And, you know, you might be in, interested and surprised to know that, you know, how people got started is a major interest for me as well. Oh, really? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> hmm, I, hmm. Do you think so? <laughs> Now, you had given, you mentioned positioning and, and the importance of that, and we talked about it a little bit in the episode of the show. You gave a really lovely, succinct, very kind of memorable definition of positioning, and I'd love for you to presence that uh, definition, and then we'll chat about that a bit more. Sure, sure. And so the definition, you know, that I that I gave on the, on the previous show was not a um, was not mine. It's, you know, it's the definition that was given by Jack Trout and Al Reese in 1969 when they first coined the term. And that's the organized system that opens the window to the, in the mind. And so that's ultimately how they define positioning. And that, you know, for me is why I started to look at, you know, brain research and how people connect and, what ends up happening in a conversation and why someone ends up with, you know, more influence than someone else. And really a lot that stems from positioning because for me, once again, because I didn't have a business background, I never took a business class. I 
I confused everything. I didn't know really, you know, what's branding, you know, okay, I hear about visibility. Oh, I hear about, you know, you should do this, but I didn't really understand. And as I shared with you before, I don't believe I need to know all of those things. I need to hire experts who know those things. I need to know what I, you know, what I do very well. And so how do I become more effective at being able to show that so that my clients get big results and that my clients are able to come back and say, Oh my gosh, Lisa Marie in six months, you know, we added another hundred thousand dollars. Can't believe this. This is incredible. You know, and, um, you know, or, you know, whatever the successes are that they've had through, through positioning. So, um, I was wondering if you could give kind of an example or a case study on how positioning made the difference in a business, because I love that example or the um the definition but it does kind of live in that esoteric space ah as beautiful yes. as this you know opening yes. windows of the mind yes hey okay how does that result in clients yeah ah, mm-hmm. yes rainbows and unicorns <laughs> isn't that nice i love them oh, show me, me the money too. yeah <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Let's get down to brass tacks. This is, you know, I'm from law enforcement. Okay. This yeah. is, so, so yes, um, you're, you're so right. Cause it almost does have that sort of kumbaya feeling to it. And, and, and you're right. And so how do you make that work for you? And so, um, I mentioned, um, you know, briefly re- regarding the brain science and, you know, talking about the, the journalist part. So when you're looking to have a conversation with somebody, you want their mind to be open, right? So we can both agree that having somebody's mind open and wanting to listen to you is much better than them going, why am I here? I'm wasting my time. Um, But the truth is that the brain is finicky. And so ultimately it's always looking to conserve energy and it's always looking to say, you know, is this really where it is that I should be spending my time? And it oftentimes go, goes off on little tangents. So you might, you know, be standing there paying attention. Looks like you're in conversation with somebody, you know, somebody asks you, what do you do? You know, and you're just so excited to like share with them what it is that you do. Only you don't realize that this is like a trap, like in front of you, they've laid this, this, they've dug this big hole and they have, you know, um, twigs and leaves. And, um, and once you say what you're going to say and step forward, you're going to fall into the trap never to be seen again. If you use certain words. Okay. Ah, yes. Okay. So, so, um, and you, and, and you, you may have experienced this. I certainly know I have. And so, um, and, and that is because like one of the phrases, the brain cannot understand, it does not compute. It saves energy is I am. And how many people, when they're told, you know, um, what do you do? will say, I'm a fill in the blank, right? I'm a coach. I'm a trainer. I'm an award-winning author. I'm a massage therapist. I'm a realtor, I'm a lawyer, whatever it is. And the brain doesn't compute. And then once that doesn't compute, it also, once again, because it's processing, it's doing its job, it's now saying, and I don't need that anyway. Okay. Yes, exactly. So that's ultimately what has happened. And so the person falls into this trap where they're just not seen. And so now they're in, pro- in, in a very polite conversation that they don't even realize where the person's smiling and nodding their head. Uh-huh. 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 Oh, good. Okay, great. Yeah. Let's switch business cards and okay, we'll go on to our next conversation. And so oftentimes people will go to events and they'll say, well, what happened? You know, or they'll meet somebody and say, gosh, it seems so promising. And then like, you know, nothing crickets, like you said, you know, and, and that's ultimately what's happening. And so when, you know, when I've used this, you know, with clients and looked at, you know, the tangible part of it is examining what it is they're saying, when they're saying it, how they're saying it in, in what manner, you know, to, to whom they're actually speaking it so that they're crafting positioning statements that operate just as you said, you know, the 17 seconds and somebody else needs something additional. So the conversation becomes almost where you're placing things in their brain so that it can be opened 
so that the connection can take place and that the opportunity for a longer dialogue becomes available for you. All right. Well, let's, uh, can you give an example then of, of what that conversation might look like? Sure. Sure. Absolutely. So, um, so instead of saying I'm a business coach or something of that nature, what would be a better thing to say? So you're looking for using an action verb. So you would always describe what you do by teaching, motivating, working, creating, building. Um, and I'm, I'm using the ing, which isn't as powerful as, um, you know, you would, you would use it in the, in the, in the present tense. You wouldn't use it as an adjective. So, um, I mean, you, excuse me, not present tense. You use it as a verb instead of as an adjective. And so power verbs are what the brain can hear. It, 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 they hear, it hears things of that it are doing. And so if somebody were to say to me, Hey, you know what? So what do you do? I say, I I'll either say teach or I'll say I work, um, with women who often feel like the world's best kept secret. Oh, very nice. And so and, that opens up a, a curiosity. Ah, yes, absolutely. So if I said to them, you know, um, uh, you know, you know, I'm a leadership coach. How's it fall? How does it feel? There's, there's nowhere to go with that. Yeah. It's just kind of like, wah, wah. that's nice. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That's nice. Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> you know? And so you enter into that polite conversation zone. And the truth is, even if you, you know, need what I have or don't need what I have, it really ultimately isn't about you buying at that moment. I'm not selling anything. All I'm looking to do is connect because if you and I can connect on some way, shape or form, we have the possibility of opening doors and sharing resources. But if our conversation falls flat and there isn't a connection and, and I have something that you need, you don't get it. And if you have something that I need, I don't get it. And that's oftentimes what happens is that, you know, I went to an event and I, you know, had this, you know, this dialogue, you know, where I positioned myself. And what's fascinating is the woman remembered me and went home at night and we had gotten into a conversation and it actually had to do with my speaking. And, um, her brother who happens to be, um, a senior vice president in an organization was looking for a speaker with a similar topic and she connected the two of us. So the opportunity is, is comes from the connection. It doesn't come from the initial conversation and it doesn't come from, you know, um, the dialogue. It comes when you and I make the decision that we have something in common, something that is aligned that makes us want to remain connected. And so this is where we have to take a look at what is that thing that you do <laughs> or that you produce or that you cause or all of that. So you can say things like, I work with women who often feel like the world's best kept secret. Yes. Ah, yes. Yes. See, it all fits together. Yes. All right. Cool. So um, what uh, if you could – how could somebody start – kind of moving into this idea of thinking about, well, what is my positioning? Are there any questions they should be asking themselves? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, you know, and that's really something that I, I feel is an important action item for anybody to do. And it's, it's crafting positioning statements and practicing them. And so a positioning statement is, it, it has to do with what your experience is. It has to do potentially could be, could have to do with length of time. Um, it could have to do with, um, the ways that you have, that somebody has spoken about what you do or your results. So for example, in conversation, if we followed that up and I added additional positioning statements and somebody said, Oh, that, that sounds interesting. So how do you make that happen? So then a way to potentially for me to use that as a positioning statement, as I would say something like, well, over the past 10 years in owning my business, I have had people come to me where they were overwhelmed, overworked, or completely 
unsure of how it is that they could um, get seen, heard, and rewarded for their brilliance. And after working with me, clients have moved from um, fifty from um, fifty thousand dollars to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in their business, added hundreds of thousands of dollars, gotten the largest bonuses, and been able to travel around the world without having to change who they are. Now that I gave you in a short period of time, and it tells a story without a middle. It tells a story by giving you the beginning. It tells a story by giving you the end. And it also positions me as the person who has the expertise. But I haven't engaged you in saying, do you need this or can I help you or any of that? Yeah, because it's the next yeah, part. It's the nature of storytelling. It's like when you exactly. hear the beginning and you hear the end, we are automatically programmed, again, going back to opening up the mind, to yes. say, what the frick happened? <laughs> I need to know what happened in the middle. So that is where then the draw comes from. And that makes, that is just very intuitive. It makes total sense. It's such a natural space to step into. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so you're, you're not, you're not in, you're not in the space then of having to convince anybody. This is just what is, and it's not a, it's not a good, it's not a, it's not a bad, it's not a, you know, it just, it allows the mind to be open. Right. And, and that's what you're looking to do. And I do want to ask, you know, so you asked me, so, so one of the things that you can do is once again, what's, what's, what's a client's success story, you know? So if you share one of your client's results, you want it to be impressive enough that somebody would happily, you know, um, you know, be interested in that result, your own story. So sometimes I'll share my story, you know, and, and an example of positioning it, you know, that I struggled with this in my career. Um, and, and that, and so I'll end up sharing, you know, what happened there. That's another way to be able to do it in position. Another way is, you know, like I mentioned, you know, length of time, how long you've either studied your profession or been in your profession. You know, um, I've studied, you know, professional development for the past 20 years, you know, and, you know, during this time, many people have been drawn to me and asked me for my support. And enough people have approached me that I decided to dedicate my life to helping thousands of people overcome this problem. I mean, think about that. That's, you know, really like, okay, I, I'm, I'm in, I'm in. Yeah. And exactly. so, and I'm, I like what you said about trying it on. Right. Right. And I'm in to want to know more. I'm not in to say I'm signing up or I'm buying from you. That's not what this is about. And that's what I really want to emphasize. It's not about, you know, now people are like, yay, I'm going to buy from you. No, 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 no. This is the connection, which is ultimately about influence and leadership. And so you're looking to, to, um, yeah, to, to, to be able to engage in people, you know, positioning yourself as like working out, you know, when you first start doing it, it feels weak, like it's a weak muscle. It feels awkward and it's really easy to feel like, you know, you're whatever the thing that you really don't want, you know, for some people it's, they don't want to feel like a fraud for some people. They don't want to, you know, be boastful, but, um, and so therefore they deposition themselves this, but this muscle, if you flex it, it is powerful because it allows you to build influence and to do it in a way that's authentic where you don't have to change who you are. You get to be who you are. If people don't like it, it's okay. They're not your people. Exactly. Exactly. And, be, and you know, we all walk around like if we make one mistake, then like they're all going to gang up on us and laugh at us and point at us and throw us down a well. And no, generally no. Not gonna, not generally gonna happen like that, you know. At, at most, you're gonna get a little bit of eye glaze, you know, from someone, right, and they're gonna right. get a polite nod and they're gonna move on. Not a really a big deal. Not really a big deal. I like to uh, use the analogy. I had, I adopted a street cat years ago, and he was a total stray. He totally malnourished, and uh, kind of you know fed him up. Kind of he was all became kind of fat and sassy. But he never meowed. He never meowed until one morning I woke up to this really weird sound. So cats don't meow to each other. They don't communicate with meowing. They only do it with people, which a lot of people don't know. This cat was sitting in the stairwell practicing his meow. And let me tell you, his meow sucked for a while. No! 
That's because funny. it it was it was like this rusty really strange sound and he practiced that damn meow until he sounded like a, a regular cat he had he, and he had to practice finding his voice and so super starters as you're listening to that i want you to just allow yourself to be like that cat and go ahead and practice your positioning statements practice your introductions it's okay eventually it'll all you'll work out all the rusty bits and it'll become very normal and then you'll be just like that cat who could get me to do anything from his different meows that's you know that's uh, so true yes yeah. yeah, what a what a great story and it's so true and that's just it you know i can't tell you how many times you know there was this awkwardness because i didn't you know, because I said something that was sort of like, it fell out of my mouth. Right. And it was like, well, that wasn't what I practiced. Like what happened there? And so that trigger in my mind that said, and for me, you know, the little voice I mentioned for some people, it's boastful or, you know, I'm egotistical or whatever, or people are going to not believe me. And for me, it was, you know, that I'm, I'm not enough. I should have more experience. I should have the, you know, the, the MBA, or I should have, you know, the parent that owned a business that I grew up in or, or, or whatever. And so people are going to say like, you know, what are you kidding me? You went and you're from law enforcement. Are you joking? Like, no way I would never work with you. And so I, I you know, I mean, it's true. So I had to really get over it because there was that voice in my head that was saying that. And I'd be like, shh, be quiet. Shh. You know? And so sometimes when I would look to position myself, I would be like, oh crap, I know I just depositioned myself. And, and it, it, and so it is practice, you know? And so, um, it looks different, you know, just like my first website and my first headshot look very different than today. And Tell me so, about it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's it's like changing fashions and styles. You know, we look at pictures of ourselves from well, for myself back in the eighties and go, Huh. Wow. I thought that was a good idea. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but at the time it was fine. Wouldn't go over now. But that's why we grow and change and, and all of that. So, yeah, good to give ourselves room. Now, you gave us a bunch of action steps there for positioning. Um, is there anything you could recommend to our super starters as they're going out this week to take forward and try for action steps around connection and leadership? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that, you know, I mentioned the great leaders ask great questions. And so, you know, get out a, a pad and paper and think about a few questions that you would be curious. You know, I gave you some of the ones that for me are interesting, but for you, you know, you have a different voice. And so what are you interested in getting to know uh, about somebody? And don't think about it from the standpoint of, geez, you know, I'm, I'm, um, solely as gathering information about the person's business. Think about it as, you know, if this person was somebody that you wanted to be connected to and somebody that you would really want to spend time with, you know, what qualities and characteristics would that person possess? And so how would you actually find that out about the person and, and being in that space of, of really, uh, you know, asking great questions. And I think that comes from practice. The other thing that I would say is speaking to another person's listening. And so oftentimes, you know, if you are someone who's loves to tell stories, you can be great at telling stories. However, <laughs> um, not everybody operates that way. There's different personalities, there's different styles. And some people are what I like to call bullet point people, you know, so, so they give information and it's short and it's sweet. And so if you don't give people information the same way that they give it to you, they generally can't process what you're sharing with them. It's too much. It's overwhelming. And so for people who like things in bullet points, that's how I respond. That's how I give them information. And generally the ultimately practicing positioning statements helps you to do that. And so I would say I gave you some, some questions and some tips on being able to sit down and craft some positioning statements. And I highly encourage you to do that and be able to practice them. How would you, you know, start, use it in a conversation. And, you know, there's a, there's a, you know, um, you know, a client of mine was actually putting something together and uh, she doesn't have children. And this position was something where she was going to be doing some work with children. And so one of the things that she was, you know, going to be writing and sending out was, well, I don't have children of my own, you know, here's where I, you know, worked and served. And I said, absolutely not. That no. depositions you, you would totally. never say that. And so, you know, you would say something like my work in this particular organization gave me some great experience to be able to understand really what's most important, you know, for serving this population. And so a lot of times what happens is when we don't have things that are practical, 
practiced or, you know, when we don't really, things come out and they actually deposition us. And so that doesn't give you an opportunity for, you know, that um, second impression, if you will, if it's already out there. And so craft those positioning statements and practice them because ultimately, you know, people follow the person first and then they follow their great plan. So this is about being someone worth following. Hmm. Be someone worth following. I love Mm -hmm. that. That's great. And that is a treasure trove of action step super starter. So you have your mission for this week to get out there and, you know, work on your connection, work on your positioning, work on your leadership, because ultimately it's, it's you, baby. It's out, Woo-hoo! it's out you doing it and making it happen. So practice, 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 just like anything else, you know, we're, you know, Lisa Marie and I, we're like, you know, you're, you're Rocky and, and we're the Burgess Meredith character, you know, the, the little guy and, you know, going, telling you what to do. Okay. <laughs> We're training you here. Get out there and do it. You got to do it. Go run up the steps in, you know, Philadelphia, wherever you did. This is, this is your version of that going out and practicing and doing this. Same thing, different set of muscles. Absolutely. Yeah. In, yeah. I mean, imperfect action is better than no action at oh, all. Lord. We'll and and we'll... really, it's all imperfect action, even yes. when it's good. So it's yes. okay. It's okay. You can be the rusty cat. It's all right. Go be the rusty cat. Um, I think, I think this interview needed more analogies, don't you? Oh, definitely. Clearly. Absolutely. Clearly. We really have, you know, we're weak in that area. <laughs> oh, Lisa Marie, it has been such a delight having you back on the backstage pass today. I've said it before, you are, uh, a powerhouse of, uh, of, and everything that you do. And, um, and, you know, I got to find a way to have you back again for something too. And I'm thinking, geez. I don't well, I was just thinking, yeah. how can you and I play together? Oh, man, we'll so, figure yeah. out something. <laughs> We're going to go commiserate about that offline, people. You can't hear that conversation. So there. Uh, so, Lisa Marie, uh, one last question before we uh, release our super starters out into the world to go practice their meow. Um, what's the legacy you'd like to leave? Ooh. You know, I, um, there's a favorite quote that I have with Ralph Waldo Emerson and it's a small poem and I carried around in high school and college and my twenties and my thirties and my forties, you know, and at the end of the poem, it talks about, you know, to know one life has succeeded because I have lived, you know, this is success. And I think about that often that, you know, for me, it really is when someone who is feeling like that world's best kept secret is able to go out and make a difference and touch more lives um, and feels like they get why it is they're here to make a difference. That for me is all about, you know, um, the legacy that I want to create is helping other people step into recognizing how brilliant they are and how much the world needs them. And when they don't allow themselves to be seen or heard that, People suffer, the people who need them. Hmm. Thank you for allowing us to have, you know, just be with us today and, and sharing everything you had, Lisa Marie. You just really, I just can't say enough. I clearly can't. So I want to just remind you, you can go back and listen to her original episode on the Start Something show, and you want to go over to her website, UpsideThinking.com. Is that right, my dear? It sure is. Yeah. So make sure you check out all of those things. Make the most of this mentorship. And we will see you next time on the Backstage Pass. Woohoo!